So my name is Henrik Meyer. I represent an art collective. The name is Reinigungsgesellschaft. It's a very long German word, and uh, there are various possibilities to translate. Uh, one meaning would be cleaning the society. Another one would be just uh, a cleaning firm. And actually, uh, we consider cleaning as uh, a kind of program. It's not that we uh, like to clean all day, but uh, cleaning is a process of renewal. And in this sense, uh, we uh, consider our work as well. Uh, my name is Miklo Scherhardt. I'm only representing myself. Uh, even though I had been working for quite a long time in an artist collective called Big Hope, but this project that is on show here uh, was a collaboration between the Reinigungsgesellschaft, represented by Henrik Meyer. By the way, the other member is Martin Keil, uh, but my colleague forgot to mention his colleague's name, so I'm trying to uh, make justice in this situation. So this, this piece here is a collaboration between the Reinigungsgesellschaft and myself. And myself. I'm, I'm an artist, uh, and since 2005, more or less, I've been working uh, on individual projects. Uh, uh, maybe I uh, have to say something. Uh, it's not that I forgot Martin. Uh, it's just that Reinigungsgesellschaft is considered to be you know, uh, an open project group. So, uh, But you said your name, so. That's why I saw that you maybe mentioned the other names. <laughs> Good. Well, actually, um, we are friends, and uh, both we are open for uh, you know a collective approach in artists' work. So uh, we also are interested in. Uh, the same topics, and that's a good basis for collaboration. Actually, in this case, uh, we uh, uh, took part in a program that uh, was focusing on Germany and Hungary, but uh, it was not the real starting point. Maybe it's just kind of framework uh, for the collaboration, I would say. Yeah, something like a last kick, you know, to just make a work start. On the other hand, uh, I think this work was starting from the point of view that we both have on, on today's society as far as work is concerned. That is that work is considered to be something totally outside of art's considerations. I mean, if we, if we consider art in the traditional sense, what the fuck art has to do with work, I mean, that that's can be a logical question. But uh, but more, more strictly about flexible work, I think, in my case, the, the motivation was to deal with this topic that, that flexibility as a concept suggests something very positive, something very um, appetizing. You know? Everyone wants to be flexible, but at the same time, you know, every one of us knows that, that uh, this, this term, flexibility, uh, covers a lot of uh, detrimental effects on on working people, on artists as well, because artists are the models of a flexible lifestyle. No? Artists are always mentioned as the, the role models for today's society. Every iron worker should become as an artist is. I mean, no muscles, uh, <laughs> a lot, drinking a lot, and this kind of thing. So we wanted just to, to make a, a very plain documentary uh, project on on, on this topic by just bluntly asking the question what flexibility is meant for different people. And I think in the interviews the answers are quite varied, but in the end almost all the interviewees agreed that that's not something very good. Well, uh, of course there's also um, the very famous uh, publication, uh, the, the Corrosion of Corrector by Richard Sennett, I guess. and. Uh, in German uh, language, the title is uh, Der Flexible Mensch. And this is right the problem what really? uh, you yeah. are referring to. Uh, from the German uh, title, you, uh, the, the, the negative connotation is uh, completely uh, erased. Yeah. Uh, and um, 
I mean, one motivation to uh, deal with the topic of flexible work is, of course, uh, to catalyze uh, value discussion in, in a society and uh, to show some responsibility as uh, visual artists uh, and, you know, take the work as a starting point for uh, dialogue about social topics and about uh, changing social values. Actually, all, all the works that both the Radicals Gesellschaft and myself and my artist collective was dealing with in the last 10 years are more or less all leading outside of this hermetic art scene. So many of them involve collaborations with other sciences, like in your case, most of all sociologists, you have a lot of uh, working relationships with, with faculties of sociology. In, in my case, in our case, we mostly work with social workers and Lately, I was also collaborating with uh, urbanists. So basically, the, the situation is that, you know, be in art, only in art, is a bit suffocating, at least for me. I mean, so my, my work so far was, a, was an attempt to, to try to find two ways of exit, still remaining inside, because I really appreciate art. I'm not saying that art is something bad, you know, but you always have to reevaluate the, the, the relationships to other parts of society and your audience and your colleagues. Uh, I think there are like uh, two basic uh, motivations uh, for choosing the way we uh, work. First motivation is to, you know, uh, see ourselves in a, a broader context, not only in art context, but in the context of the whole society. And uh, the second uh, motivation is uh, to uh, act in a way, in German you would say, handlungsorientiert. Uh, how, to, how to say this in English? Uh, no idea. You know, following the idea of, uh, of, of acting and interacting. With, with society, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean the projects are uh, also structured by by this uh, idea, by this uh, way of working. For instance, as you mentioned, it was uh, important to involve uh, other other knowledge, other other fields of uh, research. So in the, the interviews uh, we were carrying out uh, in the framework of this project were uh, uh, actually mm, negotiated with uh, psychologists and, and, and sociologists, and sociologists to, um, you know, to involve this uh, knowledge base in our uh, way of working as well. I mean, not, not, not to be too far-fetched about it, but uh, this project was was so far shown in art context, so it was mostly meeting uh, audiences that were interested in, in art questions. At the same time, there's a catalog which, uh, which during this time, so it was two years or more or less two years, it reached various uh, other forums, like uh, universities, groups of, uh, of interested people, and I think that that catalog can, can somehow have another uh, reach to other people, but of course that's a bit more difficult to follow because uh, that kind of meeting doesn't happen in a strict framework of an exhibition where you can actually talk with people. In retrospect, I, can, I could say that I always consider more successful those projects I worked on which, which did have this kind of double uh, evaluation and uh, I think it's highly possible. So the important thing is that from, from the outset you conceive an art project taking in consideration this possibility and not trying to obscure it in order to fit a nice white hole, you know, and, and the aesthetics of the linear perspective and whatever like we have in this space, but also to, to, try, to try to think of it as if you were a normal person and not necessarily an artist. Yeah, I think also it's um, the question is not to see the difference between the uh, different um, disciplines, uh, but uh, you know to 
find out uh, common fields of uh, activity and uh, of course um, the outcome of, of this project is uh, is not purely art and it's not purely science but uh, it's something uh, in between with a, uh, it speaks its own language and uh, I think uh, we, we don't have the need to attach to a certain uh, already existing discipline. We can like create our own space of communication. Yeah, that would be nice.